for Knights of Evening Star. That's right, everybody. We're back. It's time for more Knights of Evening Star. I'm your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes, and I'm joined by these wonderful people. I'm joined by Mr. Nate Sharp, Jonathan Indovino, a.k.a. Shading Penguin, Mika Button, and Anna Prosser. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. How are we all? Ready We're... for this epic session of gaming. <laughs> Such an epic wow. gaming with gamers. Um, yeah, I know. It's because cool like... they're doing the Clive thing right now, so it's making Nate's a real gamer. So it's it's true. He's a real gamer. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll get it, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. We've got some. I got some stuff planned for our boy Clive. Game, uh, gamer Clive uh, is at it. Gamer Clive, we got we got Gamer Clive ready. When do uh, I when do go. I get the the BLJ feet? When do you get the chief <laughs> wheel? Feet? Sorry, the what feet? What's that? <laughs> The backward the, long jump. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh. I gotta speed. I gotta. I'm gonna speed run the Feywild any percent. Wow. <laughs> He's gonna glitch into a corner of the map and just like. Mm -hmm. I just pop out at the end. <laughs> yeah, and he just pops out at the end because uh, the devs actually put the final mm -hmm. boss right below the starting room. Uh, the Feywild just uh, like is no not coded through. properly. Canon. Yeah. I mean that's yeah that's pretty true. I mean that's that's yeah that's very true. Um, but yeah, is everyone good? Uh, anything that we need to. Discuss, mention, you guys want to talk about any guys, anything you guys are excited about that you want to get in before we get mad hype gaming? With. Oh, I have some stuff. Sure. I have the things that we need to add to our treasury. Oh, because yeah. I'm back at home now. Let's do that. Or at Let's least do I will that. put a note down to do yes. that. Yes. Um, we have uh, 850 gold. To put in. Um, did somebody take the great axe, the roaring maw? Because we have that. Nobody has taken that so far. Well, it's there, so it can go in our armory. We also have a hag arm. I don't know if we want to put that somewhere, but you could certainly you, it, the place that you would put it would probably be Azara's tower. It okay. would be some sort of magical component. Okay, so it's just gonna chill in Azara's tower. Um, bit, you know, in a glass jar or like... Yeah, it's not just sitting something. on the floor. That would be yeah. dirty. Um, wow. I have marked down because I sold something that we I got 400 personal gold. I'm going to put 200 of that gold in the treasury and then keep the other 200. Okay. Um, we also have an extra potion of strength. And then we got 5,000 gold from Castle Bray Winter. Did we put that in our treasury already? I have that, that right now. That was okay. already in, yes. Yeah. Okay, well then, that is everything. Cool. Uh, would any of you like that potion of strength before you go? I believe, I, does it say which type of potion of strength it was, Mika? I just have written down potion of strength. Potion of strength, that's fine. Uh, I will decide which one it is now. And I'm just going to keep the fact that we have the Roaring Maw on hand, uh, just in case it... anybody wants it. Let's make it a potion of frost giant strength. So when you drink this potion for an hour, your strength is 23, which is a plus six bonus. Wow. Okay. So if somebody wants to have that, put it in your sheet. Or you anybody want it? Um, I don't think it's going to actually, it would help me much. No. And you're already a strong man, right, Clive? A strong lion cat? Yeah. I mean, it is higher than my strength, but like, I, I feel like it would be put to better use for someone else. Yeah. Agnes, would you like it? Sure, why not? All right. You Good. you have the personal potion of frost and strength. I'm taking it off my inventory. Perfect. Potion of frost and strength. Marvelous. And now we um, also have, since it's the new month, we have two healing potions. Yes. Okay. Two standard healing potions. Why not everybody know? That's good to know. Uh, do you do you, very important for today's session before I do the recap? Do you wish to give any of those healing potions to Clive before he goes on his solo I adventure? I am going to give Clive one of the healing potions, and we are going to keep one of the healing potions. Nice, there you go, Clive. You get a Me. potion of healing, standard potion of healing, right. Cool. With all that done, uh, I will give you a very quick recap, uh, as I, I didn't write a big recap because I'm mainly focused on writing this little adventure. Um, Last time on Evening Star, you guys basically attended to the needs of the kingdom. We did a kingdom turn. Uh, you discussed some future plans. We had some moments between several of the characters. Um, a lot of research was conducted. And ultimately, uh, it has led to a couple of 
things that you are seeking to gain. Uh, one of which being a way to make the Tresim scouts that you currently have available to you as a war unit. There was an idea floated to make these Tresim cats bigger or more ferocious or put guns on them. Uh, I believe was the exact terminology that Anna came up with. <laughs> was <laughs> why not? Is there a problem um, with this? No, absolutely, there isn't. Uh, but and and in and in following on from this, Clive of the Wild Main uh, has decided he might know such uh, a way to improve the Tresim Scouts, and has decided to go on a little solo adventure to the Feywild, just a little casual trip. Um, to Wee. another realm of existence. We uh, and that is where we are literally going to kick off everything today. Uh, with Clive, you have made your way uh, about four or five days journey uh, south of Evening Star into the expansive Kingswood of Cormir. Uh, the Kingswood is this huge ancient forest that stretches uh, over almost half of Cormir itself. And many of the there are many villages and, and towns built within the Kingswood itself. Um, very much the kind of share, uh, the Forest of Nottingham, you know, you know, Robin Hood kind of vibes to it. Very ancient old English woodland. Um, you. Clive, being from the Feywild or, Feywild, or at least being a kind of soldier of a being that occupies there, you know uh, that there exists what is called a crossing, a Fey crossing, a period where the material plane and the wild uh, Feywild intersect. They intercede with each other, and one can actually pass over into the other plane of existence. Um, and as you approach uh, this particular crossing, which just to most travelers would look like a very narrow, um, overgrown old trail. It looks like an old woodland trail, like it's long been since been covered up. The trees have overgrown it. Um, but you know, Clive, that this is where you entered into the material plane from when you first came here. Um, and as you begin to approach, one of these ancient trees on the pathway of the crossing does creak and groan and the the branches stretch out and emerging from knots of wood and lines of uh, bark is a face. And you hear this kind of old reverberating Ent's voice, just like, oh, who goes there? Hello. Oh, Leonin of the Summer Realm. Greetings to you, traveler. And now you, sir, how goes your day? Oh, a marvellous day. The sun is shining. The grass is green. The birds and the beasts are at ease. Do you seek passage to your home? Aye. Very well. I would be most pleased to open the way. But could I perhaps request a favor in exchange, my good sir? I mean, I can't stop you from doing that. Well, I would merely ask you, good sir, if you were to travel on the other side of the crossing, my good lady, the sage Delessia, uh, if you could pass on this message. And one of the branches kind of holds out a sort of long piece of bark, which has been a note has been ascribed into um it should not be far from the crossing uh, and i'm sure you will find my lady to be quite useful likely to offer you aid in traveling the feywild do i know of this sage delessia uh i think you probably would have heard of her yeah she's a bit of a kind of an odd person um sort of somewhat secluded the feywild is constantly in flux so you actually don't know if this when you come out of this crossing you could be you don't know exactly where you're going to be um but you've heard that she has like a, a home where you think that she's like she studies fey creatures or something like that you'd read somewhere that she she kind of like studies like pixies and sprites and satyrs and all that kind of stuff um she's kind of like a say a researcher like a sage all right, it shall be easy enough. 
Oh, good, sir, thank you. My roots are getting quite worn, and it is harder to move from the crossing these days, but I won't bore you with such things. I'm Allow afraid, uh, me. Stretching. Oh, Do like some good others. idea, yes. And you hear like the groaning wood stretch as the old entrance to like flex its branches. Oh dear. Oh, and you do hear like a big loud snap. Oh, I think I may have broken something there, but allow me to open the way for you. Uh, and yeah, you do see a very faint kind of shimmering gossamer field kind of come over the pathway. Sweet. I will take that on my on my way out. I'm just like, all right, when I come back, though, I want to see more more limber in the timber, oh. if you know what I'm saying. Yes, I will. I'll keep at it. Oh. You hear like a few more like branches snap and twigs break. Um, but as you kind of walk down, and excuse me if I do sound quite bunged up, um, as you walk your way through the pathway, uh, you do get the sensation that you've crossed over some sort of invisible line, some sort of border has been uh, breached as you step through. And you begin to hear the sound of gentle sort of lapping of water, um, almost like the kind of shores of a lake. Uh, the grass begins to, whilst it remains green in the immediate area, it begins to shift to a much more... A uh, very slight pale blue hue, kind of blue and green mixed together, um, teal-esque. Uh, the trees become more unusual shapes and sizes. The boughs twist in unusual ways. There are unusual flowers and plants all around you. And you definitely feel that you have um, crossed over into the magical realm of the Feywild. Following the path, it very quickly opens up um, as a large kind of elven archway. Um, expands before you. And as you step through it, you can see that there is a large lake uh, that is just, you know, uh, sort of ahead of you. Um, there are tree lines following all the way around. The whole place is filled with thick trees. That This is a very much a, a woodland forested realm as well. But this large lake, there is a, a pale blue elven house which sits on the shores. Um, and you can see that there's like a tower with like a turret. Um, almost looks like there might be some sort of like spyglass up there. Um, and certainly looks to be occupied. Uh, Do I have any inkling this might be this lady Delessia? I mean, the the Ent did mention that they they lived on the other side of the crossing. So, and you assume if they've asked you to deliver a message, it probably is this place. But you don't know. There are many um, in the Feywild. There are lots of kind of like lordly homes and houses of uh, Eladrin nobles of elven beings of fey spirits uh, there are settlements there are villages that you can go to um all sorts of kind of places and if if this isn't the sage then this is probably the house of some sort of fey nobility uh you imagine all right I'm gonna... certainly a good place as as you look around you're not familiar with this place by the way this is looking around this is not the fey, any of the paths you remember coming which is quite common in the fey wild you kind mm -hmm. of pop up here and there everywhere um and so you're going to probably need some at least some uh directions to like get you on started on on tracking down the summer king sure i will just big paw slam on the door yeah, sure. Yeah, you make your way over. Um, it's on the at the edge of the lake. It kind of has like this round sort of balcony that looks out onto the lake itself. But yeah, you kind of slam your paw on the ground, um, and you can see that there's all sorts of like little charms that have been hung up from the the rafters and the balconies and things like that. Uh, and the door opens by itself. Nobody seems to open it for you. Um, it opens, and you hear a very faint voice coming from within, like, "Oh yes, please come in, please. The mistress, the mistress is just by the balcony." Um, and you hear like these kind of like light airy voices coming from all around you um you do see like a carpet kind of like almost rolls itself outwards leading down the corridor kind of very whimsy disney-esque and leads you down i love how like cool and different this is for me but to clive it's it's just like yep this is yeah this, this is, is how things are how yeah. they be 
this this theory how they be. If you kind of follow the corridor down where the carpets kind of lead you, it leads you out into this beautiful balcony overlooking, and what appears to be kind of not very similar to this, uh, Azara's study, um, full of books and tables covered in parchments, um, uh, drawings. Uh, very much, you get the sense of yeah, somebody who is actively researching something, um, and sat sort of at a table enjoying uh, afternoon tea from a lovely delicate tea set, um, and a couple of like plates of fruit and things like that is a elven woman. She appears to be dressed in sort of long white robe. She has a pair of spectacles uh, on her nose, um, graying hair. She looks old for an elf, which is surprising as elves are you know, almost ageless themselves. She manages to look more mature and elderly. Um, and she sort of looks up and she's like, oh, hello there. Welcome. Uh, well, welcome to my home. I'm, I'm Sage Delasia. Can I, can I help you, sir? Ah, I've been looking for you. Oh my goodness! Uh, nothing it's like almost nothing threatening because of how large I am. Yes. Well, yeah. You kind of would be threatening, but she doesn't seem to be too intimidated. Mm. Um, she's just like, oh well. Uh, whatever for my good man. What? How can I help you? Ah, uh, goes goes into my pocket inventory, takes uh -huh. out notes, yeah. <laughs> pulls out it's this like piece that, of bark, right? <laughs> yeah, and I'm assuming, not assuming. Feywild, it's it's just going to be more fantasy game. So it's literally like hold out the palm and it's just like flying and rotating right above my hand. Oh, marvelous. Yes, that must be from old Rootbeard. She kind of clicks her fingers and you see a little sprite. You've seen pixies and sprites um, like Twig before. Um, this one... It looks like a pixie who's been dressed up like a bee. Uh, they're wearing like, you know, black and yellow little outfit. Uh, they've got like a kind of little uh, stinger lance that they're carrying. And they've got like a big hat that makes them look like a bee head. Uh, and they kind of zip by and they're like, oh, and they grab the, the note and fly back. And she's just like, oh, thank you very much, Butterbee. Um, and she opens it and she reads it. She's just like, oh, marvelous. Well, I've been waiting. Well, listen, I must repay you the favor. Um. What brings you to the Feywild? Is is there? Are you looking for something? Uh, obviously, you're you're somewhat familiar with our lands, as you're not staying there, doe-eyed and bewildered. But um, is there anything I can help you with? Hey, um, I'm in search of some upgrades for some tresum. Maybe some. I think they were called guns. Uh, well, I'm afraid. Nothing that I would happen to know about. The best person to ask about any sort of uh, things like weapons and warfare would be the Summer King. Um, I do think he is, he's in the region somewhere, but there's a hunt going on there. They're currently um, hunting the Jabberwock, uh, and, and that, that there's a hunt going on somewhere. Uh, uh, but you may be able to find them. Um, I'm afraid I, I, I really don't know where to begin. There is a town, there's a settlement just to the northwest, um, Wisteria Town, uh, you could go, you could try there. They may know a few things or two. Um, but I might be able to help you in another way. Obviously, you're traveling around, and I assume you are a great warrior, able of looking after yourself. But um, you shouldn't travel the Feywild alone. It can, it can be quite dangerous, but also um, tricksy. And there's a few, there's a few uh, interesting dilemmas that have come up. Let, let me, and you'd also, you, you might be doing me a bit of a favor with something. Let me, let me give you something. And she waves her hand in the air, and she arrays three silver charms in front of her and she taps each one and then she flicks them in your direction and there's almost like a line of magic that seems to kind of coalesce out of them and you begin to see three forms appear on the table and at first they look like pixies and then they begin to shift and change and they begin to resemble Agnes, Azara and Tarkal and for you guys, you guys are in control of these pixies. They have the they have the personalities that Clive thinks of for Azara, Agnes, and Tarkle. Oh my gosh! Um, <laughs> uh, and they are they are, oh, no! <laughs> they're your characters, uh, but they are they are based on sort of Agnes, Azara, and Tarkle to a kind of characterized version, and also a pixie version. They are you know a couple of feet tall. They got like little fairy wings. Um, and they they look like and act like your three companions. Um, and uh, <laughs> as, as they as they are appearing, uh, Clive, she also says, ah, "Now these are not normal pixies. These are um, a special kind of pixie that has become quite prevalent in the area. Uh, I've I've found a way to sort of create versions of them. Uh, these ones will be a little bit different. They will have they can speak and they can think um, much like the companions that I've drawn the memories from." 
Uh, but also you should take this with you. And she slides you, Clive, a book. Uh, and the book is called The Pixie Dex. And I'm going to share with you... <laughs> I'm going to share this okay. with you on Roll20. <laughs> so, oh, does this spark oh have God. you? What, and I'm going to share... Sweetie. And I'm going to share... Uh, <laughs> Agnes, I'm going to share with you... Uh, in fact, I'll share it with everybody so you can all see them. So here are your pixie forms. Uh, so I'm going to share these, and we can read these out so that anyone listening and can't see uh, can can do these. These will all be handouts, by the way. So these will be under the handouts menu. Or are these in roll twenty? These are all in roll twenty. Yes. Pixie uh, Pixie mud. This sounds like a real thing, actually. Uh, Don't know what that could be. Mark was like, I know Nate's birthday is coming. I'm going to make him a perfect episode. (laughs) Yep. This might this might be oh more than one episode, gosh. but we'll see. But uh, she's like, yes, I am. I'm Sage Delicia. I, I, I some I'm so, I'm sort of a specialist in pixies. You could call me the pixie professor, I suppose. And uh, I say it's become become my ambition to study and examine this incredible phenomena. These these pseudo pixies, these pixiemon, uh, who have, have gone there. And and you should take these three with you. You should take them on your journey. You may encounter. Uh, you may encounter some others who have uh, become uh, you know, in- invested in these in these pixies, but also you may encounter wild ones on your on your travels. Um, Did she also um, ask? Now, are you a boy or a girl? Doesn't need to ask that. She can see Clive. Uh, one, but the other thing she would say. Oh, I nearly forgot as well. Um, if you want to, this is completely optional, of course. Um, but and she uh, pulls from sort of a, a, an extra dimensional chest a cap. Uh, and she places it down. It's like ah, this is this is a caps uh, a cap of pixie battling. Uh, it, it it will give you an idea of what energy level the pixies around you have, and also it identifies you as as a someone who is is interested in it. If you wish to, of course. Obviously, this is completely optional. Uh, you may wish to find that these pixies offer you no interest at all. But uh, I feel like you should have them if you're going to be traveling through this area searching for the summer king. Oh, that's a lot of mechanics just thrown onto me, but... <laughs> <laughs> the cap is purely aesthetic, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, um, he'll, he'll put the cap... What's the cap look like? You, you tell me, what does it look like, Nate? <laughs> this is up to you, you can decide. <laughs> you can go the classic red and white, or we can go, uh, you know, something else. Yeah, I think I think, I think, think Clive with a it's red and white... It's got holes for years. <laughs> yeah. No, it would be... Wait, hold on. What, what what's, my, what's my ear set up? I imagine it's just like it's too small and fits like between the two ears. Between the ears, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it just balances them. Oh, just, just small sits. hat. Yeah, and yeah. um, at, at, at this point, you know, as you're kind of like adjusting the hat and reading through the pixie decks, the the three pixies, uh, you you guys fully awaken. Uh, you kind of come to the thing, and you you acknowledge that Clive is is you know you are bound to Clive. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to do what he tells you, but you are bound to him. Um, and yeah. Uh, feel free to go nuts. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> this is genius. Your pixie dex <laughs> is phenomenal. This is so detailed. It's, it's gonna be very oh rough. It's, oh, this is so oh, good. You can actually so study much. right now, Nate. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Nate, do you want to just read out like some of the pick, like the uh, it's a lot, but like maybe the first bit or something, oh, and then talk about see. the type. Uh, welcome to the wonderful world of. Oh wait, it will just read it out loud. Welcome to the wonderful world of Pixiemon. Pixiemon's a name given to the unusual types of pixies that can be found across the fey world. Unlike normal pixies and sprites, Pixiemon are the creatures of... Oh, creations of creatures, dreams, memories, hopes, and fears. They're akin to spirits, etc., etc. All right, we got fire, which is strong against plant, weak against cold. We got storm, strong against beast. Oh, it's... That's a lot. Is there like a <laughs> is there like a chart that I could like look at for? Oh, I'm afraid I haven't got around to making any chance. The pixie dex is really a sort of first uh, first working. Um, they, they're yeah. quite a new phenomenon, I'm afraid. Uh, you know, we've detected ooh, uh, a few a few dozen uh, different varieties, but I'm sure there's many more out there. Uh, but yeah, this is sort of a first edition. Um, we can at it's... least read the ones that are ours because mm-hmm. Agnes yeah. is fire. Which is strong yep. against plant and weak against cold. And Azara is storm, which is strong against beast and weak against stone. And Tarkal is uh, poison, uh, which is strong against beast, weak against stone. 
Oh, we got a Blair and Stone weakness here. We might need to box one of them. <laughs> I also just love that Azara has a normal move, which is slap, and everybody else's move is quick attack. That's very on brand. Well, I was going to say, do you guys want to talk about what attacks you guys have as, as the Pixies? Um, so, uh, yeah, Azara, you've got, um, do you want to talk about yours? Yes, I have two storm moves, one light move, and one normal move. Uh, my storm moves are Lightning Blast and Shocking Touch, which actually have PP, which is so cool. Oh my well, God. yeah, in, in the Pixie, the Pixie decks tells you about Pixie points. Uh, moves can only be used a number of times oh based on their Pixie points. Also, Piximon can restore their Pixie points when they rest at a Pixie Center, just yeah, so y'all know. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, we're we're tiptoeing am- around here, huh? <laughs> What an amazing system that Mark came up with out of his head based on Com- nothing. Completely wow. on his Completely own. Original. Yeah. Completely yeah. original. Completely yeah. original. Yeah. Everything has its own unique name and mechanics here. But <laughs> let's make it clear. Did, nothing did this, here is did, taken from anything else. This did is this all get cleared by wizards? Just, just asking for a friend. <laughs> What's there to clear? What's there to clear? Our, this is an original idea <laughs> that our DM came up with. Yeah, 100%. I would like to make clear that we had no idea he was going to do this. <laughs> yeah, just in case anyone was you listening. Can, you can 100% blame me on this. Pixie <laughs> Monsters is a Mark Hume's original. I don't understand the problem. No oh my god. Uh but yeah, so so Zara has uh has lightning blast. Guidance is is a buff, it's not an attack or, or a defense move, which means that the next uh attack opponent Pixumon has advantage. Uh so we have Storm, which is a, an attack move, and then we have uh, her normal move is slap, uh, <laughs> which is so good. It's so yeah. good. I have a question, Lady Delicia. Oh, yes, of course, yes. To further, my, for nothing. to further my attachment to these little friends, can I name them? <laughs> I mean, you certainly could. Oh, I, mean, no. I, I, I based these three on the... Com- I, uh, you have strong connections to companions elsewhere. I based these three on those. But yes, I suppose you could. And if you caught any uh, wild Piximon, you could name those, of course. But if, I suppose if you wanted to change these ones' names, you could. All right, then. I'll point at... Uh, I'll point at Azara. Be like, you, you're Sparkle. <laughs> point at Agnes, you are Charcoal. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's it. <laughs> and then I'll point to Charcoal, and you are Sneaky Boy. <laughs> Hey, Sparkle, Charcoal, and Sneaky Boy. Yeah, thanks, man. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I can see that you are clearly meant, uh, you are clearly very uh, meant to uh, explore and, and, and discover all sorts of wonderful... Uh, I have this Pokemon. uncontrollable urge to attain all of them. <laughs> <laughs> that may be difficult to do for now, but certainly you should try and track down the Summer King. Like I said, there, there is a town to the, the northwest who may be able to help you with that. Um, there are also quite a few Eladrin lords and ladies around this particular area, but they won't, uh, they've become quite obsessed with these pixies and they certainly won't talk to you unless unless you can prove yourself to them. Um, but they may be able to guide you. They may be able to give you some uh, clues as to where the Jabberwock hunt is taking place. Um, and you can, you can certainly do so. Uh, and oh, yes, finally, let me give you this map and then she will give you a map of the region, Clive. Ooh, amazing. Uh, and I, the reason uh, you guys should absolutely feel free to play your pixies because I do want you to be involved in this. Um, pixie pixies can only battle other pixies, so you guys will make the you know do the fights and things like that. There's very cut down combat rules. If Clive gets into a normal D and D combat, huh. you guys can absolutely still help. We'll still roll initiative for you as well. Um, you, your actions will do basically what they do to pixies as they will do to normal monsters. So you can give Clive attack ro- advantage. You can do a little bit of damage. You can do, you know, what you can come up with more creative things if you can think of them to do. Uh, please do. I didn't want to just have you guys sat there quietly for like an hour while I did something with Clive. So uh, I wanted to make you guys at least involved in this. But yeah, if, happy if, birthday, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you if, so much. Um, if our pixies are the version of us that Clive sees, then I guess Agnes or Charcoal, sorry, is 
probably like blathering like <laughs> and then as she speaks like sparks fly off of her in every direction <laughs> and that's just her normal state just oh <laughs> oh my goodness uh, uh let me and you see the professor uh kind of conjures um a little almost like a little mermaid pixie who's got like a little mermaid tail um and she's like can we can we put out some of these fires that this one is creating and <laughs> this one is kind of like squirting little water everywhere and things like that um trying to catch up after charcoal uh charcoal um I like yeah, to imagine nice. that uh, Sparkle is like a very angry Tinkerbell esque, just grumpy, <laughs> like crossing her arms, like pouting everywhere, and just like stomping in the ground, <laughs> like stomping midair. Uh, you guys, you guys are full. Uh, you guys are fully sentient. You can speak as well. Other other pixies might not be able to, but you guys are special. So oh no, Sparkle doesn't still... spark. Sparkle uh, very sarcastically goes, "Sparkle, spar, spar, <laughs> sparkle, spar." <laughs> <laughs> Does, well, does Clive boy. think Tarkle's cool? Is, am I a cool <laughs> edge lord? Is that why I'm sneaky boy? Yeah. All right. Okay. So then Tarkle, Pixie Tarkle, or <laughs> Sneaky Boy. The root yeah. Runs. He just he has his hood up always, and he's just like playing with his dagger, like spinning it between his fingers, and just casually running, not at the file, <laughs> from corner to corner. Probably yeah. has a, uh, if we may, a tiny, tiny little cape of billowing. <laughs> yeah, just nice. Always. <laughs> just, just, yeah, nice. Nice. Oh my god. Perfect. Um excellent. Well, yeah, the uh the professor lays down the map and says, Yes, so the settlement is here, and she points to a village to the northwest, that is Wisteria Town. Uh you can go and visit there and, and see if you can get some rumors on where the Summer King may be. Um, and then yes, I suppose you're you're free to explore wherever you like. If you have any questions about the region, uh, do feel free to ask. And I'd be very excited before you before you return, uh, if you intend to return to the material plane, do stop by. Let me know how you got on, what what sort of pixies you encountered. That's all quite lovely, thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. What a lovely, charming man it is. And to see you take so quickly to three, three pixies is uh, quite endearing. But yes, good luck. Good luck on your travels. I, I souls roll out the door. <laughs> yeah, breaking a few like c columns of stacked books and urns along the way. Uh, you smash through them, and, and yeah, um, you can basically move Clive square to square. Every four hexes that you move on this map, we're going to roll a random encounter to see what happens. All right. um, so yeah, it's uh, just take it away. Where would you like to go? Move one at a time, uh, okay. uh, as we will describe the scenery as it changes. I will, uh, I'm going to move to this, this is kind of an open hex mm -hmm. right here. It doesn't seem to mean much going on. Yeah, this is all like along the coast of this lake. This is like this huge expansive lake that stretches. And you can see that a river begins to flow the further north you get. And that seems to wind its way through the Feywild countryside. Um, you do begin to see blossoming trees of purple flowers to the, the north as well. But nothing, nothing uh, of, of particular interest in this, in this hex. Okay, uh, I'm gonna keep walk. I'll just keep walking along the. Yeah, so you go one, two, three, four. You do uh, when you get to the little circle of mushrooms on the map. Um, this is called a fairy circle, and mm. uh, you see that there is this gnome, like a kind of garden gnome. He's wearing a little red hat. Um, he's sat on a toadstool, uh, and when he sees you come in, he kind of like, uh, fairy circle transportation for three apricorns. Apricorns. Ah, hello, hello. You okay there, Mister Lion Man? Yeah, hello. Hey, I was trying to get my way to a Wisteria Town. Are you familiar oh, with it? I am. Yeah. If you want to go to Wisteria Town, it's just uh, it's a little bit further to the northwest. It's not far, not far from here at all. Um, if you want, you don't want to. Uh, if you want to use the fairy circles, uh. You can go elsewhere, but if you just want to go with Sarah Town, yeah, it's just that way. All right. Have a nice day. You you have a good day, Mr. Lion Man. G goodbye. <laughs> he just waves goodbye. Just lets you go. Uh, and yeah, you just continue on. Um, when you get to the next one, we're going to roll a random encounter. Do, do, right. do, 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 can you roll a D8 <laughs> for me, please? Do, do, do. You want me to roll a D8? Yes, please. Oh, uh, let's do it on D and D Beyond dot com. That's a one. 
A one. Oh, okay. So as you are traveling uh, along the banks of the river, um, you have sort of trees uh, to your right-hand side, and you can see up ahead. You begin to see the the distant signs of a settlement. You can see buildings poking up. Um, but as you're making your way along, you hear a sort of rustle, ruffling in the tree tree line. And two, at first you mistake them for more gnomes uh, because they sort of have a very similar... Uh, look to them. They seem to be shorter in stature. Uh, they do appear to be wearing uh, large red... I'm just going to try and get the description up for myself here. Uh, sort of red hoods rather than caps with long pointed tips. Um, and they're both wearing these big, heavy iron boots uh, when they approach. And they see you and they look at each other and they sort of like nudge each other and says, Ah! Yeah, that one's got some wixies there. And they kind of like, hair, kind of going to each other. And they move to intercept you. They're basically, they move to the road, having seen you coming. And they're like, oh, there, lion man. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> this is our road. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and hand over your apricorns. I ain't got none of those. I'm just on my uh. way to Wisteria. Oh, he's just on his way to Wisteria. He's just on his way to Wisteria town. Well, maybe he should hang over that fancy-looking sword and armor of his, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Not yours much longer, Sonny. Uh, and they begin to kind of pull from their belts these long, curved sickles. Um, like, you better hand it over or you're going to get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're, like, significantly smaller than me, right? Yeah, these are small creatures. They're like little mm-hmm. halflings, little gnomes. Um, kind of like look down at them from like five feet above. And like, are we serious? Oh, yeah. We're serious, big man. I'm going to die to more. Mess with- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you absolutely can. <laughs> Give me uh, uh, what kind of check am I rolling here? Uh, wisdom 16. Wisdom 16. The first one's a fail. The second one is a fail. Uh, these two, you kind of let out this billowing roar and you just see their little knobbly knees kind of like, sh- you know, shake and shudder and they're like, <laughs> maybe we should... <laughs> and they just seem to be completely stunned by fear. Um, and I'll just like keep walking like in between yeah. them, just leave. <laughs> you just like brush past them. Uh, what about mm. the three pixies? Do you guys, are you guys just following Clive? Because you're like flying and present this whole time. Like you are with Clive basically at all times. Um, uh, yeah. Sparkle will stomp angrily after Clive and turn around to the shaking little gnomes and go, Meh! and then <laughs> <laughs> keep flying. Nice. nice. You tell them. <laughs> yeah, I think I think uh, uh, Sneaky Man just just appears behind them and keeps going because he's sneaky. So he's just he's already okay. behind them. Agnes like, is giving a speech atop one of their heads. Okay, car, just like car, yeah. car, 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 car. <laughs> uh, then, um, how long does Daunting Rule last, Nate? Uh, let's see. It says. Until the end of your next turn. Okay, so you get like a couple of feet, like you get like 30 feet down the road, um, and these two sort of seem to like come to their senses, and they're like, hey, hey yeah, we're, not, we're not afraid of you. Uh, and that's going to be initiative. <gasps> All right. Uh, uh, we'll just have uh, Pixies. We're going to have you guys go after Clive rather than rolling individ- initiative, but you'll have your own individual turns. Um, you have a flight. I didn't put it in the stats. You have a fly speed of like 30 feet. Um, and then you've got your moves. Uh, but these things probably aren't going to attack you if you fly. Uh, what do we get, Clive, on Initiative? 15. 15. Nice. Okay. So one of these little red cats uh, kind of like 
is incredibly angry that you have frightened them. Um, and he basically starts running down the road as fast as his little legs will carry him. He gets about halfway to you, and then he stops, and kind of like Sonic the Hedgehog, he just begins pounding his feet, and then he rushes forward in a burst of speed, and is going to attempt to kick his giant iron boots into your shin. I need you to make a deck saving throw. Uh, I see that, yeah. What's that? I see it coming. Yeah, you see this coming. You, you okay. see this coming for danger sense. Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> you can see the little man like winding up to run at you and then try and kick you in the shins. That is a 13. Okay, 13 is not enough. He manages to kick this boot into your shin. Uh, you're going to take... Uh, uh, I'll roll it, in fact. I won't just do the, the default damage. Uh, that's okay. going to be 23 points of bludgeoning damage, and he knocks you on your ass. Like, he, like, kicks you in the shin, and it kind of sends you sprawling, um, and he says, like, yeah, we're not afraid of you. Uh, and, yeah, he seems pretty angry as he, like, kicks you in. He's like, give me your money. Give me all your money. Give me all your swords. Give me your apricorns. Oh, um, I'm going to... Well, first, <laughs> I'm going to unstable backlash at that. Okay, nice. So let's D8, do, 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 and roll. That's a one? What's one? Each creature of your choice you can see within 30 feet you must succeed, uh, succeed on a constitution saving throw or to take one D12 necrotic. That's a 16. What is, hold on, let me look really quick. What is my, what, where is my? Gonna have to tell me, pal. Yeah, I'm trying. Let's see. Where where do they put it? Save. Uh, 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 save. It's only in features and traits, I think. That's what I thought. Let me see. Uh, I might be able to find it. Wild surge. Ah, here it is. DC is uh, DC 16. 16. So he just manages to pass. Well, um, and is the the other guy? The other one's not within within range. No, the other, well, the other uh, one's thirty feet away. So, oh, so that so he has to make it as well. Too. Yep, uh, that's a nineteen. So they both pass. Well, J.K. Sad face. Um, I will also do this to see. Uh, but it, that's your reaction, right? So that's mm -hmm. uh, when he hit you. Now it's your turn. Okay. Uh, and then pixies, you will go afterwards. I'm gonna rage. Okay. And, <laughs> he just uh, kicks you in the shin. I think that's a suitable response. Very, very upset. Like he kicks me in the shin. I take the damage. I probably just like drop to a knee. It's like, mm -hmm. well, now you fucked up, lad. Yeah, we'll see about that. Flowers and vines temporarily grow around you until your rage ends. The ground within 15 feet of you is difficult terrain for your enemies. Okay. okay. So half movement. Uh, while they're around you. Um, mm -hmm. but he's like, I'm going to cut off your mane and make it into my jacket. Oh. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> uh, I'm going to, I am I am now going to swing with, with Evan Scorn. Nice. Go for it. All right. That's a plus nine. Oh, so close to 20. That's a 17. It's. All right. Damage. That is wait, where so I mean the first there's... one because it's one handed, I think. Yeah. And then plus rage. What's your what? rage bonus? Three. So twelve. But yeah, Evan Scorn comes cutting down, kind of like glances off this little guy, but does, you know, bed in and he kind of like ah kind of reacts as he gets cut by it on the first attack. Still standing. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that again and attack recklessly. Okay, okay. advantage on the attack roll. All right, let's see. Uh, first one. First one's a 12. That's going to be a miss, so let's hope that the advantage is a little better. 27. That is a hit. All right. 27. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's a, hit. a hit. All right. Uh, rolling damage. That many. So 13... So you see uh, this creature is now bloody. It's at half HP. So you, your second strike kind of like takes him by surprise. He's like, oh, oh get, brother, get over here. Help me. He's tougher than I thought. Uh, and the other one's just like, I'm coming, I'm coming. 
I'll um, look to fix- uh, yeah, I'll look to the rest and be like, all right, what are y'all got? <laughs> All right, you guys can just take this in any order you want. Like, you know, let's just uh, you go. You decide who wants to go amongst you because you're all kind of doing very similar stuff. So, uh, okay, I'll start. Uh, Sneaky boy is gonna sneak over to the brother that's on his way, and he's gonna smoke cloud uh, that fool okay. and give him disadvantage on his next nice. attack. Okay, so you go over to the one who's on his way, and you like surround him in smoke, and you just, <laughs> oh, they've got some of these annoying pixie man. <laughs> It's just like choking away. Um, what does it look like when you do this? Is this like a little smoke bomb that he throws down? Like, uh, it depends how edgy he is. I'm gonna just maximize his edge. So he literally <laughs> just like he just looks down and smoke just starts coming out of his cloak as cloak. it's waving and yes. it's just pouring out of him. <laughs> nice, I love it. Cool. Agnes will, or sorry, charcoal will just <laughs> scream and run into the cloud to tackle that same. Nice. Okay. Same person. Make, make a tackle attempt attack. I so I just roll a. Oh, hold on. So you're just gonna have to roll a d20 plus the number. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's really bad. Uh, <laughs> so, it's gonna be a seven. Seven. So you run in and you just kind of like bounce off this red cap's back, like you run in like, and then and you kind of like you know stumble backwards, um, not drawing too much attention to yourself, but definitely doesn't have the intended effect. Yeah, so it goes. Charcoal, get it together. <laughs> um, I like how I you could speak and you guys no. are like, no, we're not. No. No. <laughs> what do you think we are, meows? <laughs> God. Um. With shocking touch, it says that a target would be stunned. Is that only for a Piximon, or would that be for a full sized as well? All right. Yeah. Well, uh, Sparkle is going to angrily stomp over to the one in the storm cloud and try and squeeze both of his cheeks with her tiny little pixie hands. Sure, go for it. Make an attack roll with your uh, shocking touch. Uh, that's sixteen plus two, eighteen. Does that hit? That does, in fact, hit. Yes. Aha! Um, so two damage. So- Two damage, but they are also stunned, um, which does, in fact, inflict the normal stunned condition, at least until the end of its next turn. And so, then, uh, uh, as a free is- action, <laughs> Sparkle goes, <"Meh." laughs> Nice. Uh, well, it would normally be that one's go next. Uh, it's stunned, and then he's ah. like... Snaps his like face. It's like these damn books, these. Um, and we go to the, the the first one who's been attacked by Clive. Seeing that you've kind of attacked recklessly, this one is going to try and swipe you uh, with its sickle, um, and it gets it gets advantage on both of these attacks because you attacked recklessly, mm-hmm. uh, Clive. That's going to be uh, first one's a twenty five to hit. Yeah, and the second one's a thirteen. So the twenty five is going to hit. Mm-hmm. This is going to be. 12 points of slashing damage, maximum damage, as this thing like cuts you across the arm with its wicked looking sickle. And then it tries to do the same thing again. That'll be six because it would be halved because you're rage. Mm. So, uh, and then the first one is a 20 to hit or a 20 to hit. So both the same. Um, and then that's going to be seven, half to three points of damage as it's like trying to cut into you. <laughs> this, guy's, this guy's tougher than I thought. Um, Clive the Wobbling. I'll give you one chance to walk away. I'm a little busy. Yeah, make a um, make intimidate check, but with your strength rather than charisma. Like Ooh. this is like a pure straight up like I I I'm giving you this one chance, dude. Walk away. So let's see. Uh, I mean, my intimidation is uh higher than my strength oh, okay. bonus. If what's I your what's your yeah? Because what's your what's your intimidation normally? Plus five. And then what would you, what's your strength modifier? Uh, plus four. Plus four. But and then your so your charisma is what? Plus one or plus two? Plus one. Okay, so that means plus four. So do an intimidate, but roll it with plus eight because it would be your proficiency Ooh. bonus because your proficiency and then strength. So roll okay. uh, d twenty plus eight. All right. Let's see. That rolled a six plus eight. Four. 14, I think this guy's just, uh, I think right now he's like looking at you and he's eyeing you up. Um, and he's just like, you won't be talking so big when my brother gets over here. He's gonna, he's gonna, me and him are gonna beat you up. And he's just like rambling. I don't think a 14 is gonna be quite enough. These guys are pretty, pretty vicious and pretty nasty. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, this guy's not convinced. Um, 
But if you want to, you know. Was that yeah. a free action? I'd say that was a bonus action. Okay, that's fine. Uh, cool. Then I'm going to almost keep swinging. Sure. All right. First attack is a 17 to hit. That's going to be a hit. All right. So that is that rolled rolled seven plus three um, bonuses. Wait, this rolled nice. this just rolled two things, and I think that might be the dragon damage bonus. Uh, I I think it's the if you're wielding the sword two handed because a long sword's a versatile weapon, uh, and you've got a shield, so it's doing it one handed. I think. Well, I I clicked on the one handed the one d eight oh, okay. plus five, and it rolled a d eight, or maybe not. Huh. Well, it was that's seven, fine. so. Yeah, it was, it was, and add three for the rage, that's ten. Um, mm-hmm. This guy's pretty, he looks badly beaten up, like he's got cuts all over him, um, leaking sort of like this faint glittering powder uh, out of the wounds. It's like, I, it, this was your decision, lot. You could have, you could have had another day, but so be okay. it. So be it, here we go, chop, chop. That would be, oh, so close to critting. Yeah. That was a 23 to hit. <laughs> that hits. And that would be 13. So you watch, as the sword strikes, this guy just explodes into glitter, basically. Like, as you hit him, he just poof into glitter. And you hear from the smoke cloud kind of emerging from it, this other one. He's like, brother, no! He's gone and bloody respawned. It's going to take him forever to get back here. Uh, and he's just he's like, ah, fine. Um... Uh, yeah, that's the end of, end of your turn, Clive. Cool. Yeah. Pixies, what do you want to do? Uh, uh, I don't think... Um, I'm going to quick attack. <laughs> quick attack! This is a little quick attack. Mm-hmm. And try to deal two damage. It's a 14. To 14 hit. total hits. Yeah, Wow, hits. all right, I do two damage. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Two points of damage, bam. Uh, Yeah, as the little pixie sneaky boy cuts in, uh, slashing across, you see like a flash of an animation, and then that's it. Um. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slap. Oh my God, that's a crit. (laughs) Well, it it says what you get on a crit. Uh, I double on a critical hit, so four whole damage. Four points of damage. Hey, against another pixie, that'd be devastating. That would be. (laughs) Uh, but uh, yeah, you watch as these two pixies are beating <laughs> up, and then Agnes, what do you, you want to do? I'll add a fiery flash, or no, sorry, an ember to that. <laughs> Just a Such a cool original name, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that will be a crit as well. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Why don't we crit when we're that. not pixies? <laughs> You're so pixie. uh, it is two damage and burning the target. And then it would go to four because it's a crit. So yeah. Uh, and then yeah, you watch as like his little red hood and his whiskers and beard are now on fire. And he's like, Agnes ah, ah, ah. like is flo- himself- charcoal is floating in the air, going bah, 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 chop, 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 chop. <laughs> lecturing, <laughs> just like lecturing yeah. as like fire comes off uh-huh. the finger every time. Yeah. Um, this guy is basically gonna flee, like being set on fire by pixies. His brother respawning. He's just like, ah, fine, keep your hate records, and he's just gonna go running off into the woods, basically like desperately trying to put himself out um you guys technically pixies you do technically get a tax opportunity if you would really like to uh, <laughs> no no i think he will just sheets his dagger <laughs> agnes has or charcoal has hands on hips and just call <laughs> nice um yeah and this 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 red cap ruffian that goes running off into the woods uh in terror and fear uh of Clive and his pixies. Serves um, him right, honestly. Yeah. Did, yeah. did he happen to drop money on his way out? <laughs> they they do. They do <laughs> drop. Uh the one that you did, the one that burst into glitter, very Scott Pilgrim-esque, leaves five apricorns. Uh which land on the ground. Sweet. Um, which are like little, yeah, they're like little nuts. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, they look like they're some sort of like little little chestnut type thing. I'd, I'd already be familiar with like these things and their applications. 
Ah, uh, no, you have no idea what the, oh, <laughs> you okay. know, they, they look like they, they look like they're, they're worth something because they, you know, this creature dropped them um, and they kept talking about these nuts. But uh, no, this isn't like a typical Feywild thing. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, like, yeah, you know, they, they kind of look like little, little, little fruity nuts. They could be a snack. They, they could be a tasty snack, maybe. Um, well, that wasn't that not bad. Great job. I'll give them, give them a thumbs up from above. <laughs> Is this what's all of your little pixies? You're just like mm-hmm. a little thumbs up. Nice. I hear the final, I hear a certain video game music happen, a fanfare happen after this battle for sure. I feel like in the yeah. Feywild that should happen anyway, whenever a, a battle finishes. Uh, I think that, that having music in the Feywild fin- when you finish a battle, whether it's, there are many different video game franchises that you True. play a little fanfare when you have True. a victory. You get like a, you know, whatever that's from. Whatever that's from. That's the one I heard in my head too. So weird. Yeah, weird. Um, uh, oh, before love- before we continue, yes. I I just I have to pee real bad, and um, this seems like That's something fine. where I can't really step away quietly. <laughs> <laughs> Not when it's like really focused on you. Yeah, you? I'm just like um, ah. That's fine. You can you can take a quick we can take a quick pee break. Okay, um, great. I'm just gonna check in with the others while you do this. How's everyone else doing? Anyone else need a pee break? Nah, not right now. Maybe as soon okay. as Nick gets back. <laughs> yeah. As soon as Nate gets back, you're like, yeah, I'm going to go now. You know, actually, wait a minute. Uh, I really, I really am excited for the first uh, Piximon battle, honestly. Like yeah. the, the Pixie versus Piximon. Yes. Pixie versus Pixie. Yeah. I do hope that Clive turns his hat around to get ready for the battle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping for like a, like a charcoal go. <laughs> I choose you. <laughs> yeah, I, I need it. I need it in my life. Um, and is is Clive uh, Clive's going to say which move we use, right? Or is he- I think I th- it's up to you guys because I didn't want to, like I didn't want Nate to have like all the decision making, but I I would think it would make sense that he could suggest a move and then okay. you decide if that's the move you want to do, right? So if we're, we're a Charizard or not. <laughs> Yeah, right. Or you know, uh, it's uh, you know, you we're not Pixies, saying that Clive's Pixies the best are, Pixie trainer. Right. Pixies yeah. are, Pixies are. Right. 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 You're right. You're right. Yeah. Mark, this is right. genius. Like, this is so good. <laughs> it was like I was sitting here trying to think of like a little solo thing that 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 Nate, Nate Clive could do in the Feywild, and I was like, man, like doing something that's quick enough that you guys, I, you know, you guys aren't just left not doing anything. I don't feel like I can do anything that's really going to be fun and exciting. And then I just had this idea of like, oh, what it, I think it was when I had the idea of having you three as pixies that were like following Clive and helping him. I was like, yeah, but what if (laughs) I put in other pixies? You know what they say about Nate, Mark? What? That he wants to battle. He does. (laughs) Oh, oh. (laughs) never mind it's fine oh we need him back we need him back he's not coming back he's He's not coming back no that's it yeah you want someone else he's he's actually left the state he's on a plane right now yeah he's leaving he's He's, he's gone sorry i had to i had to go uh tend to dying in the corner for a second (laughs) (laughs) right well now that you're back Mm -hmm. I'm alive. Uh, you continue on to Wisteria Town, and uh, it doesn't take you long after encountering these ruffians. Um, you very quickly arrive. This beautiful town is is surrounded by wisteria trees, so these kind of beautiful purple um, flowered trees that kind of droop like willows along the edges of this river. Uh, very homely. All the homes are very you know fairy tale whimsy fantasy, right? Like this place looks like renaissance fair times 11 mixed with disneyland right it's everything is like pastel colors everything is like picture perfect and the town seems to be populated by a mixture of elves and dryads and then a couple of other fey creatures like satyr maybe a centaur um that seem to be kind of going around town it's quite small it's only like a little village there seem to be a few residential houses but you quickly identify there seems to be one um, sort of like apothecary, uh, like building that seems to be like remedies and herbal treatments. There seems to be a general store, um, and that's that's kind of uh, you know kind of it for like the main buildings in town. There's no need for taverns and stuff here, but there are lots of citizens walking around. If you do just want to just ask general questions, um, or you could try either of those two uh, more prominent-looking buildings. Yeah, I'll, I'll walk around, start tapping a. 
<laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, you uh, you kind of speak to a couple of the uh, the residents um, who uh, remark, they're like, oh, hello there. <laughs> uh, oh, you seem to, uh, Leonin, oh, and you're carrying some of uh, uh, the, the pixies, I see. Yes. Oh, well, is there anything you're looking for in particular, sir? Is there anything that we can help you with here in Wisteria? I'm looking for a way to try and upgrade some Trissom, get them more ready for combat. Any ideas? Oh, well, I'm afraid a little bit beyond my knowledge, sir. Um, such things, probably you'd be better seated seeking out one of the Elantrian lords, perhaps, or or even one of the great Archfey. They they would have greater knowledge of that. I'm afraid we're just sort of local types. We can give you a lot of information about this local area, but I'm afraid those are pretty big topics, not something I can help with. Unless... Mm, Maybe the lady who runs the 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 Pixie Center, she might know a little bit more. She's she's quite traveled, um, quite knowledgeable. She may know a little something. I'll I'll select thank you. <laughs> do, do, do. And then ends. It just immediately ends mm-hmm. the conversation. And they just nice. turn. Yeah, sure. Like back to their uh, combo. It, yeah. Uh they just turn back to whatever they were doing, walking around town aimlessly, picking up a barrel, putting it down, moving over to another set of barrels. Examining it, going away. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, doing doing pointless things. Um, yeah, uh, if you want to go check out, he does point out the uh, this little townsperson, probably like a little uh, like an elf, uh, just points out the building he was referring to as the uh, the Pixie Center. Uh, Let's go to there. Okay, sure. Um, you make your way inside, uh, kind of like curtained, draped. Uh, about halfway down curtains rather than a door. And as you push them aside, uh, you get a strong sense of floor of like flowers and perfume, floral essences. Um, you can see that there are shelves that have been set up and kind of uh, put around the walls full with different types of like crystals, wind chimes, medicinal plants kind of litter the place. Um, and there are pixies kind of running all around the place, all these different weird looking pixies. Uh, but behind the main counter, you see quite a striking figure. Uh, they appear to be a white-bodied centaur woman uh, with long, blonde, curly hair, uh, wearing sort of a light pink top. And she has a unicorn horn coming from the top of her head. She's like a unicorn centaur. Um, and when she looks up and she sees you, she her eyes like go wide and they sort of almost sparkle and she just claps her hands together. <gasps> It's a big lion man. Hello. Welcome. Welcome, friend. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Clive of the Wild Man. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Clive of the Wild Man. My name is Hope. Um, and I'm I'm sort of looking after the place for a little bit. How can I help you? I'm seeking out. Do you need your energy resynced, or I've got some lovely crystals that could help you with that? Or do you need something for your mane? I do a wonderful conditioner for your sort of silky mane, maybe. My mane's probably like greasy and dried out and like covered in blood. It's like, no, I I like it. Oh, Oh, well, if that's what you like, that's what you like, sweetheart. Of course, yes. I'm looking. I took notes today. Um, I'm looking for. The hunt. I believe there's a Jabberwock being sought out. Oh, yes. I have heard all about that. The Jabberwock. It sounds like it's a terrible dragon thing. Oh, my goodness. So, so awful. But the Summer King, he's supposed to be trying to hunt it down. Um, yeah. Where, where, where is he? Oh, well, you know, it's they, they, the Jabberwock is this big thing and it flies all around the place. I don't know. The last thing I heard was, well, it's either at the, the water mill, which is just sort of north of the here, or it could be at the Hag's Old Tower, which is sort of northeast, or there's a farm across the river to the south. It, it may be in one of those places, maybe. Um I'm afraid I don't really know. I'm not I'm not really a hunter. I don't like hurting things. Oh, look at your little pixies. They're adorable. Uh, Hello, that's sparkle. That's, that's charcoal. And that's sparkle. sneaky boy. Oh, they're adorable. And she, like, goes to, like, pet all of you pixies. Like, she basically will pick you up if you don't stop her. Um, but this charcoal, giant like, takes it woman. but rolls her eyes. Oh. Sparkle is, like, angry, like, <laughs> 
<laughs> this one seems to be a little bit cranky. Maybe we've got something here. Um, and she'll go and try and find like little snacks for Sparkle. Like she brings out like little cupcakes and like a little drink and things Charcoal like that. Charcoal tries to them grab them. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. I've got enough for you as well. And she gives like one to charcoal and she gives like a little cupcake to each. And then Sparkle Sweet like, like drop kicks it and like, <laughs> like kicks it across the room. I think this one's got a bit of a bad attitude, Mr. Clive. Hey. <laughs> um, is this one shine? She's like looking at little sneaky boy like, hello. The sneaky boy is just still a stone right now. He's just face down, uh, hood over his head. He's this up. one's going through some stuff. Oh, little guy. She's just like patting his little head like, oh. Dinky Boy takes it. He just doesn't move. He secretly mm. enjoys it. What, do you need to rest them? Have you been, have they got into any fights or that sort of thing? What about yourself? You've got a few little cuts and scrapes. Do you need any healing, Mr. Clive? Oh, I'm, I'm all right. The little ones might need something. They're pretty frail. Oh, okay. Well, we can definitely give a little... And you see the tip of her horn glows, um, and you feel like a wave of healing light spread. All of Pixies, you get all of your PP, you get your Pixie points back, um, as you get refreshed, hopped nice. up. Nice. Um, but yes, Mr. Clive, I, I would say, well, there's 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 four Eladrin lords in this part, and you could go and try and speak with them. They would probably um, be able to direct you to at least have a better idea of where the Summer King last was. Um, but I would say either the water mill, uh, the hag tower, or maybe the farms um, would be a good place to start looking for the Jabberwock, if that's what you're after. All right. Thank you much. Does that help? Oh, well, I'm so glad. That's you're most welcome, and you're welcome back anytime. Would you like to take some conditioner just for the just in case? Just when maybe later when you have a bath or no? It'll it'll take it. Just like there, all right. It's on the house. It's on the house. It's fine. It's fine. Um there you go. You can add a uh, you can you can physically add as a, an extra item uh, hopes conditioner. Oh uh DM, I have a quick question. Yeah. These uh, Eladrin lords, these four lords, are they possibly elite? Uh, there are four of them. There are I four? Just, I uh, just, uh, you know. They could be. I'm not going to say whether they're all not. No, I just, I just, you know, hope, uh, an out hope, of their question. Yeah. You know. Yeah. If, if you show Hope your map, Hope will actually point out, she'll point to uh, in the northwest, there is a kind of palace surrounded by cherry blossom trees. She says, that's the palace of the summer blossom. That's where the summer Eladrin lives. And then this kind of wintry house over here, that's the long house of bitter winter. That's where the winter Eladrin lives. And then just to the west of here, amongst the green trees, you've got the green house. That's the spring Eladrin's uh, house. And then in the southwest is the Tower of Autumn Twilight, and that's where the Autumn Eladrin lives. Um, and I'm sure that you go, but they 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 love their pixie battles. They love them, and they're constantly coming in here with their beaten up pixies, and I've got to heal them. So be ex you need to be ready to have a fight if you go and speak to any of them, for sure. All right, off we go then. <laughs> okay. Where do you want to head to, Clive? Um, okay, so there is the uh hag tower, the farm, the water mill. Mm -hmm. Yep. Those are the three options. Well, those are like three places that they thought you could start to look for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um I'm just gonna I'm 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 gonna roll. Okay, sure. Yeah, you can do like a D6. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, right. There's a D3. I yeah. just did D6 half it. Yep. All right. That's a four, one, two, three. So I guess um, I'm assuming this is the, the Hag's Tower that's like kind of in the middle the, to the north. The creepy yep. swamp. Yeah, the ruined tower. Yep. yep. That is uh, an old Hag's Tower. Yeah, so you can just head towards that. Great. Here we go. All right. Uh, we're going to have... Up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as you make your way, uh, let's just move you straight there. Roll on the random encounter table. Do -do 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 do, do, do. That's an eight, uh, D8. Yeah, D8, please. Whoop. That is a three. A three. Ho ho! As you are making your way, uh, following a kind of winding path through the woodland realms of the Feywild, you hear a voice like, Hey, stop! 
uh, and outrushes a centaur, but this, uh, sorry, not a centaur, a satyr, so a kind of like goat legged young boy who's wearing like a little schoolboy uniform top and a hat. Uh, and he's got three, so in fact, actually, he's got, I've got to roll to see how many he has. Uh, 1d3. Oh, he's got three silver charms and he runs out. He's like, hey, you, you've got Piximon, fight me. <laughs> And we're gonna have a picky battle as a train. You have been challenged by School Satyr Tim. Uh, School Satyr Tim. Uh, suddenly in, engaged in this like, like this the scenery has changed. The camera's yeah. different. And Clive is looking around uh, like, the oh, fuck's happening? <laughs> Shady, can you? I need to roll for their first Piximon. I have a random table of Piximon. Can you roll uh, two d8s for me, like one d8 and then roll a d8 again sure. for their first Piximon? You wanted me to roll it? Yeah, four. Why not? I want you. Okay. I don't want. Uh, I want you guys to roll for three me. and eight. Okay. Uh, <laughs> school Satyr Tim goes. Lily kiss, go! And he throws out a pixie that appears to be kind of like almost like a ballerina, but made out of plants, basically. And they send out this uh, this uh, this <laughs> Lily kiss uh, pixie, um, and that is they're going to be their first pixie one. Now, by the pixie decks, you must send out one pixie and only one pixie versus one pixie. So you've got to send out one of your pixies to battle. Uh, are they? So do do the pixies stay in? like charm form or are they just like out roaming theirs me? did like that this guy seemed to like this little satyr pulled out like a little silver charm threw it and then their pixie appeared but your your pixies are just with you all the time um you've I'll got just, special main character pixies <laughs> i'll just look at him and be like ah uh, i guess the one of you want to go out there being fire and seeing that this kind of looks like a plant charcoal is like <laughs> <laughs> All right, off you go then. Agnes flies out. I mean, charcoal. Yeah, sure. Uh, so we going. To, so the way this works is a initiative is determined each round, rather than it being like one initiative roll. Each time you roll initiative to see who goes first and who goes second, um, you can use a move. That's pretty much all you can do. Now, Clive, in theory, you can tell the pixies what you want them to do, but it's up to them whether they want to do it. So. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is charcoal and uh, Lily Kiss are gonna roll initiative. Ooh, twenty-one. Ten. Ten. Okay. Uh, so uh, Lily Kiss, the little school satyr Tim, uh, will say, "Oh, Lily Kiss, use Leer." Um, and Lily Kiss kind of like makes like a frowny face and like tries to like go blah, 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 at like uh, at charcoal. Uh, and your charcoal, your attacks are reduced by two for three turns. Whoa, jeez, minus two. Uh, all pixies have the same AC and hit points. Basically, they all have the same uh, AC and hit points. Uh, just to balance the math, um, it's really just about what a bit what powers you use. Because uh, I certainly don't have enough time to create an in-depth stat system for <laughs> pixies. So, uh, so what would you like charcoal? What would you like charcoal to do? And what is charcoal going to do? I think Clive would just be like, "Well, uh, have fun." Uh, then an ember is just going to be the the move of choice. So the move of choice, absolutely. <laughs> and you do I make an attack toothless. roll, right? You do, yeah, but you have a minus two as you've been leered. Hmm. That's not going to be good. Oh, sure isn't. Roll high. <laughs> no. I rolled a two with a plus it two misses. and a minus two, so it's a two. It's a two. So you watch as the little ember <laughs> sails past and misses. Oh, I see that you've set out a fire type pixie. Uh, you know your pixie pixies well. <laughs> uh, yeah. Totally. I see this side. Oh, what am I gonna do? Um, uh, my normal use tackle, Lily. And in fact, actually, we gotta roll initiative again. Actually, before we do that, uh, so it's uh, initiatives determined each round. So give another initiative roll. Man, my dice are cold today. Nine. Two. All right, you're going first. Six for me. So uh, charcoal. I'm gonna try Ember again, unless right. Clive says anything. Well, how about it? 
Seven. <sighs> Just keeps missing, unfortunately. Every time you kind of launch it, this this lily lily kiss is very nimble and agile, kind of bouncing around the battlefield, um, and you're unable to like kind of get a position on it. Ah, uh, uh, my normal, my plan attacks will work. Use tackle, uh, and they're gonna try and tackle you. <laughs> Four, a seven. It's a miss as well. <sighs> Evaded the attack. This is uh, an ongoing, ongoing threat. Um, <laughs> a lot of initiative. posturing in this. Yeah, yeah, a lot of posturing and a lot of missed attacks. Well, it's because you know Clive's not fully committing. You don't, you don't believe you can win enough. You need your trainer isn't supporting you. He has to believe in uh, the heart of the cards or something like that. He has to believe in the heart of the cards, the heart of the pixies. Uh, that's an eight for my initiative. Also eight for mine. Okay, uh, we will default to main character, so right. uh, Charcoal can go first. Assuming Clive doesn't give me any other prompts. Clive, well, before, before your attack, be like, uh, lad, this is going nowhere, and I'm, I'm a very busy man. Uh, can, can I go? No, we're going to into a pasty battle. The rules of the Feywild. I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I didn't get that update are you a I, coward are you gonna leave in the middle of a battle i'm gonna pull my sword out <laughs> not that kind of battle it's a pixie battle <laughs> uh, if you're gonna talk shit and you're gonna get hit like <laughs> well you should well you, you think of them as your troops as your as your loyal companions you, you're not you're supposed to be a general right but i i'm i'm a lot stronger i could just stab yeah, little plant thing there, and then it'd be gone, and then I'd be on my way. I think all our pixie, I, I assume, all the pixies are looking at him very sadly. Like, <laughs> just we, look may, really sad. we, we yeah. don't, we're not doing a good enough job. <laughs> no, you're doing great. All right, well, like, uh, use a, uh, use the, uh, the, the fire smasher or whatever. I, I use my last chance at Ember. Sure. Oh, for a I forgot. 14 to hit. <laughs> 14 is a hit. That is a hit Hooray! against the plant type. It's a plant type, so this is a, you are strong. Mm -hmm. uh, so four points of damage. It's super effective, Clive. You watch as Charcoal's little flame goes out. The little flower pixie's like, ah, kind of like floats around. Um, and he's like, oh, no. You've taken off half their health. How, how did, do you even know that? I did four that? damage, right? Uh, you did, yeah. You did yeah. four points of damage, uh, reducing their health by half. Um, Charcoal goes. They will. <sighs> nice. Nicely uh, they done. Are gonna, they're going to attempt to tackle you back. Da, 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 da. That is a twelve to hit. That's a miss as well. <sighs> as you dodge the side, charcoal. <sighs> See, can't you experience the thrill of a pixie battle <laughs> now, Mister Lion Man? I mean, uh, it's usually more fun if I do the fighting rather than watch someone else, but we can play a game. That's that's nice, it's I guess. It's a game. It's, it's more like a game. Please don't hit me with your big scary dragon sword. Be being back home, uh, Clive will be a bit more respectful than usual. <laughs> He'll sheat the sword and be like, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> uh, all right, Agnes. Initiative. Oh, yeah. Initiative. Oh, I'm going first. <sighs> Got a seven. Okay. Uh, this time it's like, oh, Lily Kiss, try your sleep powder. Uh, it's going to make an attack roll. Plus two. That's a six. Uh, you kind of feel a bit sleepy, charcoal, but you, uh, uh, you kind of manage to fend it off. Uh, yawn, but you are still awake. I will then. I'm going to take fire form now. Oh. oh. Do I have to roll so for watch. that? Nope. It just takes okay. takes immediate effect. Um. So yeah, you kind of <sighs> and little charcoal becomes like a little, almost like a fiery version, like a little fiery fiery elemental version of herself. <sighs> and makes a come at me, bro, posture. Oh, that's <laughs> kind of neat. <laughs> nice like yeah, come charcoal looks uh, very proud when clive says that <laughs> yeah you're just like beaming like looking up yeah. at him yeah you feel like little hearts come out uh cool roll another initiative for me see who goes first on this one eight eight well they're going first oh uh, try tackle again lily kiss 
I think I'll try and tackle you. Man, I'm rolling trash as well. That is only a nine to hit. Um, I tries to strike you. Thanks. That does not hit. Does not hit. Kind of unfortunately, considering that I'm in fire form. Mm-hmm. It would. That would be very good. Uh, your turn. I let's see. Wow, so fire form only lasts a turn, huh? Uh, well, you know, look, the, the balance of the game isn't perfect, right? Okay. Sometimes the devs of these games, they're working on them very last minute and they don't always think things through and they don't think about how the math of like a missed attack can really suck and how long these fights take. They don't think about those things. Mm -hmm. So let's say that it doesn't last a turn and it lasts until the battle ends. How about that? Or until until they take damage. And take take damage. That's another good one. Let's do that. (laughs) Okay. Uh, All these devs are putting out patches on the fly. Yeah. They're just patching it all the time. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to use Tackle. Tackle. Give you a taste of your own medicine. Tackle. Uh, 21. 21 is a hit. Two points of damage. Uh, you see little Lily kiss like... Uh, 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 and he's just like, oh, no. My precious Lily kiss. Uh, you're all right. You win, Mr. Lion Man. Lily kiss return. And you watch as the, the little pixie disappears into the champion. Uh, into the little charm, uh, and then the little satyr comes and holds his hand out, um, and inside is eight apricorns. He's like, here you go, your winnings. I, I don't want that. But you won. You have to take them. You don't get a choice. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, it's the why rules you, of... It's Clyde, the why are you ruining the game? What do I do with those? We could spend them on things, like in the in the town. Did you not go in the general store? No, I got everything I need. Oh, well, you could buy you could buy pixie charms so you can capture more pixies. You could buy heals for them if they get burned or stunned uh, or poisoned. You could buy all sorts of things. Charcoal's <laughs> chewing on one. <laughs> Tell you what, lad. You keep those and you go to the store. To get yeah, you get a little no! friends up, and we can. You re-watch. don't understand if you don't take these from me right now. Bad things will happen to me. You have to take them. What's gonna the happen if I don't? The wild. So you have to take them, sir. Please. <laughs> Clive, why are you so mean? <laughs> you see a little red dot appear on his forehead. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You have to take them. <laughs> Please, they have my family. <laughs> this, uh, kid is um, kind of, this kid is like, <laughs> like trying to like put them into your hand. He's like, you have to. Above, above board, uh, the player is loving this, but Clive just has no no clue what's happening. <laughs> Like this is so like for even for Feywild, this is so weird. <laughs> weird <that's laughs> like stupid. Oh, all right, I'll I'll take. Like looks around. I will take your apricorns. Ah! Oh, he just like puts them in your hand and then backs away and just runs <laughs> off. Like immediately just leaves. Um, and yeah, oh your God. little your little book does update to say like you've gained. You how you got five before so you have. Uh, 13 apricorns. It says 13 apricorns. Oh. Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Moving on. (laughs) Moving on. Uh, You make your way to the tower. Can you roll a d20 for me, please, Clive? Mm -hmm. Let's see how much uh, evidence is here. Let's see if the hunt is here. I do like the concept that Clive is used to the Feywild and all of his shenanigans, but even this is so weird for him. He's like, what the fuck? Like, why is everyone doing it? It's a, it's a five. It's a five. Okay, only just. So when you arrive at the, the tower, Clive, you can see that this probably used to be once a lair of some evil creatures, right? It's long since become dilapidated, but there is evidence that battle took place near here very recently um you can see that parts of the tower have been scorched by fire there are hoof prints in the ground there are like arrows and some broken spears embedded and they're all fresh they look like that they've this the fight here must have only you know taken place a few hours ago at most um what do you want to do pixies do you want to what do you you might i don't know if there's anything you guys want to do as well 
I think Tarkal starts, uh, well, uh, Sneaky Man, Sneaky Boy starts just like darting and like looking for things around the room, but mm -hmm. super, sure. super sneaky. Yeah, just roll a, roll a d20 for me. Like, like no modifiers for Sneaky Boy, but just roll a d20. Uh, that's a two. Two. Um, you probably get distracted by like a really cool rock that makes you look <laughs> even more edgy and badass. Like you stand on it and like it makes you look really cool. All right. Um, nice. That's <laughs> like that's really climb fair. up on like a little ledge and you're like, I am the knight. <laughs> I'm vengeance. <laughs> the weight of the world is on his shoulders. Yeah. He looks like an anime opening. He's like stood on it and like the cape is blowing nice. around him. And it's like in profile. You get a swooping camera shot. <laughs> I think Charcoal is begging for snacks, like tugging on Clive's Clive. cloak. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll hand her an apricorn. <laughs> I don't think she that like, she can eat apricorns, but she'll try. Yeah, it's just like gnawing on it. Like, <laughs> yeah, it can't eat it. <laughs> uh, I think Sparkle will be uh, nonchalantly uh, feigning disinterest, but looking around the site of battle to see if anything is there. It's interesting. Roll, roll a 20, roll a d20 for me. Solid four. Solid four. Um, you find, uh, I mean, what would Clive's version of his are? Maybe like you find like a, a, a like a, a puddle and you can see your own reflection and you're probably admiring yourself in it. Like, hmm, I look awesome. Um, Fair. Very, very Tinkerbell looking in the glass, yeah. like uh -huh. yep. pruning the wings. Exactly. <laughs> yep. uh, but yeah, what about Clive? Like you can see that there was some sort of battle here, but it's it's not currently here now. Could I, can I try to like trace tracks that yeah, I, because you said there's like check. footprints? Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, All yeah, right. yeah, yeah. All right. That is a 10. Uh, 10. I think that the, the tracks are kind of, um, it's difficult to tell how much further they go. That you don't, they clearly lead further, probably. I'd say you can't necessarily tell where the tracks go, but you can tell where the tracks came from. Um, uh, the tracks seem to have come from from the west, um, and in the west you can see these kind of like this beautiful palace surrounded by cherry blossom trees, um, and you think that the, the hoof tracks have come from there. Where they go, maybe somewhere further south, but you're not. It it, it could be nearby. It's it's quite hard to tell. The the ground is so like stomped around on that it's the tracks are quite easy mm. to lose here um but yeah you think that like the, the hoofs come came from the north west um and you think that they might lead somewhere south um but there's all yeah you can see that whatever it was this this battle must have happened very very recently oh <laughs> and then <laughs> nate just did some what he's out <laughs> he's done <laughs> no recent battles no nope, we're back Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I will. I don't. I don't think there would be any reason for him to think to that going in the tower would do anything. Mm -hmm. So you, it looks like it's long been abandoned. Like it looks like this tower is is basically like a ruin. Um, it looks like a a fight was sort of around it. Um, you could you could have a look inside, but you don't think that there's necessarily going to be yeah. any more clues or evidence there. Um. So yeah, where where would you like to go? Based on uh, the farms are point. to the east. Yeah, uh, the wind, the water mill is to the uh, west. To the east is this uh, cold. You can see to the east, the ground becomes more snowy and cold, and there appears to be like these snow covered pine trees mm -hmm. with an almost Viking like long house at the top of a hill, um, surrounded by like a wooden wall. That seems to be in that into the east. To the south is where you came from, is Wisteria Town, and then mm -hmm. further south of Wisteria Town was the farms. All right, I guess we'll go to the uh, the water mill because that's closer than the farms. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah, you can make your way there. It doesn't take much time. Um, can you roll a D eight? Yes. If that's where you're gonna go. Yes. Ba -da -da. D eight. Ba -ba -da boom. That's an eight. An eight. Ho, ho. Uh, Anna, can you roll two D8s for me, please? I sure can. Eight. I rolled a six and a two for eight. A six and a two. 
All right, so Clive, as you're making your way, you make your way just before you reach the water mill. Um, the three, you three pixies, you immediately begin to sense the presence of a wild pixie. Uh, and coming into view, uh, you see a, uh, with sort of glowing light wings, you can see that their, lip, their wings appear to be like geometric shapes of light. Um, and they almost look like a little musician. They're dressed almost like a choir's angel with a little white dress robe, and they're holding a big bell, um, and they're kind of ringing it gently. It sounds like kind of little musical bells jingling along as you as you move. But Clive, you kind of stumble on a wild pixie. This is a pixie in the wild. Um, and the book that you were given sort of vibrates a little bit uh, in your sort of pouch or your pocket uh, in, re in response. Um, but yeah, the three pixies, you, you know, uh, the pixies that it, you want to fight this thing. Like you, you see this thing, there's an instinctive, like one of us wants to fight this, like, oh, we want to fight it really bad. There's like an instinctual drive to battle between pixies. Um, but what do you do? All right. Who's up for this one then? What is this one? Uh, you don't know. Uh, so far, uh, only you know there is a the the the, the pixie dex is vibrating in Clive's pocket. That's it. That's uh, all we know. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, Clive's just like go. I, if, I, I'm still out of PP on my moves, right? We haven't yeah, recharged. I, yeah, charcoal looks like all tired and like yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're probably looking a bit worn down after your battle. If the pixie dex is vibrating uh, in Clive's pocket. Uh, mm -hmm. Sparkle will kind of fly over and go, Spar, Spar, Sparkle, Spar, and like point to it, like take it out of your pocket. Cool. I'll I'll take it out. Like, uh, yep. Ah, eight, 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 when, eight. when you when you take it out and point it near this wild pixie, the book automatically opens, um, and it begins to fill yeah. like the pa the blank page fills with a picture of it, and then it begins writing text, um, and you hear a voice which is. <laughs> Glitterbell, a light type pixie. <laughs> and it gives you a bunch of information about this type of pixie. Um, and this is a, yeah, this is a light type. Um, this is great. Mm. <laughs> Have like the insatiable lot, urge to watch Saturday this. morning cartoons. Me too, for some Same. odd reason. Yeah. I don't the know what it is. Reason. Yeah, yeah. I had a lot of fun making this. Uh, <laughs> when when the when the pixie deck says light type, Tarkle, like you'll see his anime eyes glow green <laughs> underneath his hood. <laughs> he pulls out his dagger and he looks up to uh to Clive. No. Oh. Well, off, off, off you go then. Love. Okay, and then he just darts into battle. <laughs> uh, yeah, the glitter bell, uh, glimmer bell. Sorry, as soon as glimmer bell sees you, uh, yeah, it immediately instigates, uh, and it's going to be a, this is going to be a, a, a fight with a wild one. That's going to be an initiative roll with sneaky boy. Uh, mine is plus sneaky four, so eleven. You are going first, sneaky boy. Okay, right away. Uh, you you see sneaky boy like. He's he instead of like green coming out of him in my mind, just like shadows start coming out of him, and he uses shadow strike and just tries to murder this thing. Yeah, go for it. Uh, I rolled a uh, nine, ten, ten plus what? It's one PP. Oh, I have one PP. Wait, I should have done that. Plus four, so fourteen to hit. Just barely hits this thing. Oh, not as cool. Okay, well I hit him and it does eight right because it's a light. Uh, it is a light type, but poison isn't strong against light. No, but my move type is shadow. Oh, it, that's right. It's a shadow I'm using move. shadow strike. It's a shadow it's super move. super effective. It's eight points of damage. One strike, sneaky boy. And you just watch this glitter bell. Ah, and it faints and it turns to light and dust as it evaporates into nothing. <laughs> so it's sneaky boy. as though he knows something about Piximon and, and how to use them. <laughs> yeah. he's, drawn, like, he's drawn to fight them, right? Yeah. Sneaky boy is like... Yeah. I want to fight this light one immensely. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Sneaky Boy then he throws his dagger up and what he does is he like you see him look up for the first time and it like it slides down his cloak. Like it looks like Whoa. it's gonna hit him, but it slides down and it sheets underneath his cool. cape. Yeah. It's very cool. No cool. Sneaky Boy. Uh <laughs> If 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 you had had uh, the the pixie decks will tell you if you had had a pixie charm you would have been able to capture that pixie and add it to your repertoire. Sadly, you don't, Clive. But you arrive to the watermill uh, and can you roll a d twenty for me, please? Gotta get Clive to a pixie mart. 
Clive doesn't care. Clive's not interested. <laughs> Nate loves it. Clive don't don't care. Clive's so just like, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. That is a two. A two. Okay. So when you arrive at this watermill, Clive, as you begin to approach, you begin to hear the fanfare of hunting horns. <laughs> And you hear the galloping of hooves, and you see clutched to the top of the watermill is a bizarre-looking dragon. Uh, its neck is incredibly long, like a snake, and its head is blunted. It doesn't have a nose. It has these large white eyes. Uh, I will, for you guys, I will post a picture in our Discord. Uh Oh, I wanted copy image. Ow! I can't do it. Uh, I will send it to you later. But uh, it basically it has like long spindly limbs, long thin wings, and this grotesque long neck with a very strange face with these large white eyes. Um, and it's clutched to the top of the water mill. Um, and you see it kind of two beams of fire come out of these large white eyes and knock several... Um, clad in sort of red and gold armored knights from their horses. They're kind of like thrown, dismounted, and they start pulling out their swords and like calling and shouting to people. And you can see that there is a, a hunting party of knights, musicians, very sort of um, middle... Thank you, Mika. Uh, Got you. For me because I was trying to copy Whoa. paste and it wasn't working. That's um, ugly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Ugh. And... Uh, the the creature the 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 knight sorry it's almost like a kind of renaissance fair of like you get like the 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 trumpeter they're wearing the tabards and the gold and red colors they've got like the armor on and stood at the back of it sort of like sipping on a like a big goblet of wine um is an enormous probably 10 foot tall huge like elf man with long elven ears and a, a thick beard of like gold like not like brown like blonde hair but gold hair um they have a gold lion's mane of hair around their head and then they have these giant stag antlers coming out of their their head dressed in like finery they've got a huge longbow that they're kind of leaning on with their other hand and they're just sort of like yes get out of it men <laughs> good luck yes take down the beast um and they're calling out to the who are struggling to get up and fight this thing. Uh, you can see that they've had some success. It does appear to be somewhat wounded, but its wounds appear to be healing up. Um, and you see all of this ahead of you. I like see all that going on. And I'm 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 assuming that is the Summer King. Would I know that? You, you yeah, you know okay. the Summer King. You have met him, you have served him, he knows who you are. Um, this is like a figure that you know you actually were sent on a job for basically mm. like you were sent to evening star for this and you you would 100 percent, yeah this is the summer king himself so i like walk up i see the commotion and this mm -hmm. escapade going on and then see the summer king and just kind of be like ah and then go that way yeah okay and he like he kind of like is like he's so focused on this fight he doesn't see you approach like you're probably gonna have to get his attention because he's just like glugging wine and just like no no hit him hit him there Yes, strike and get the pole arms out. Come on, where's the musicians? Let's get some music. And he's just like having a great time. Ah, yeah, your highness. Oh, oh well, well. Oh, 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 he drowns his wine, throws the cup behind him. He's like, Clive of the Wild Man. <laughs> I haven't seen you in. Oh, I don't even know how long has it been. Time passes funny in that material realm and things. How have you been, my boy? Oh, it's been all right. Been hanging out with the little ones over in that, that other plane. They got they got some yeah. problems happening and whatnot. Oh, nothing I'm sure you can't take care of, my good warrior, my good warrior. <laughs> oh, are you here for the hunt, by the way? You're here to join in, slay the Jabberwock, are we? <laughs> it does look fun. <laughs> I, I, might, I might hop in, but first, I have, I'm here on business. Oh, yes. Well, I suppose I should get a report from you on those those mortals that you've been dealing with. But yeah, tell me what you're after first. Let's hear it from you, my boy. Let's hear it from you. Well, they're in need of uh, amplifying the powers of the, the Tresum army. Tresum? What's a Tresum? I've never they're, heard of it. They're like these, these, these flying cats. Flying cats! Aye. Flying cats! 
I'm sad. Bloody brilliant. I want some. Bring me some next time you come, Clive. Bring me some Tresim. I want some. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> All right, brilliant. You know what? You want and you want to enhance them. Oh, we've got we've we can do that. We can do that. Jolly good. I've got I've got just the elixir. It was given to me. <laughs> I've got a story about this one. It was given to me by a witch, right, in the woods. Uh, and she used it to make all of her beasts these giant war creatures. Um, <laughs> me and her had a bit of a thing, if you know what I mean. And uh, you know, it was part of part of part of breaking up. We sort of exchanged a few things. I gave her some servants and some magic relics. And one one of the things I asked for was this elixir. I wanted I wanted to see how big I could make a dog. I made a pretty big dog. Let me tell you, it was massive. It was massive, Clive. Oh, um, sounds, I can give you that. That sounds wonderful. I don't recommend you give it all to one flying cat. You should spread it out a little bit. I haven't got much left. Um, but I could give you that. Yeah, that would work, wouldn't it? Clive completely forgets that note. Um, it's that's. That's bloody brilliant, sir. Uh-oh. I'll tell you what, though. I I think it's only fair, summer, I am the Summer King, you you help kill this bloody Jabberwot, I'll give it to you. Go on. Go have a go. Eh, no loss on my end. Exactly, right? You're going to have fun anyway. It's a win-win. Mm, win-win indeed. All right, let's go. Look at these little ones. You should take the little pixies with you as well. Oh, let them have a bit of a go. Go on. Off you go, little ones. Uh, off you go. <laughs> All right. I will take these tiny little two damage dealing creatures to fight this dragon. <laughs> Can the Summer King come back often? I fucking love him. <laughs> he's, he's an NPC now. Like, Clive knows him. Like, he's great. He knows that you've got some stuff with the with the Feywild to do. Like, Apparently, they're kind of tight. Like, the Summer King knew him. Right? I love this bro like friendship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm for but, it. You know, if you're going to have a guy called the Summer King, I feel like that there's a way that he's going to act. He's either going to be like Glorfindel or like, you know, Tolkien-esque, like ethereal elf, or he's basically played by Brian Blessed. I <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he is, uh, if, he, if this was a man, it would be Brian Blessed. Uh, <laughs> Gordon Clive's alive. Um, cool. Uh, I don't think I have a, an a, an actual encounter set up for the Jabberwock because <laughs> I didn't know how far we would get in this. Um, but I think that that's probably a good point. I know it's a little bit early; it's going to be a bit of a short episode. But I think, like, if we wrap this up, then next week we can have Clive fight the Jabberwock, and then he can come back, and then we can get back in with the uh, with the with the evening star stuff. How does that sound? Nice, love it. Because also oh, this cool. fight's probably not going to be like ten minutes, so I think that this is probably a good stopping point. So that was that was fantastic. Yeah, so oh, good. Thanks. Oh my god! Thank you. I, Thank I you. applaud you. <laughs> I, you know, it's I, that, that there's nothing better a DM can hear than to see the players having so much fun, and like oh. if that means you do a silly little side, you know, side adventure with certain. Copyright infringements. <laughs> so I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? Know. This was all your idea. Totally yeah, original. I think you just wrote like another wizard show is all you're you right. It's like, hey, this is just going to be another show. Like, it's great. I tell you what, <laughs> I am so tempted to like expand the, like make this like a full adventure. Uh -huh. and, like expand the pixies and stuff like that. There is There was nothing more fun to me than I literally had like a random table with like two D8 columns and it's like the first one is like the start of the name and the type. And then the next bit is like the, the the next bit of the name. So like you could have encountered pixies such as Stinky Pickle or Blaze <laughs> Trumpet. And like I was just like, I love Trumpet. this. Like, like, Look, I'm not <laughs> trying to say that a certain 90s cartoon did have a pretty infamous trio of, of trainers of a certain variety that may have happened to go on adventures together. Mm. And, you mm. know... Maybe a, a quad could happen. Ima exactly. I'm Imagine just as well if you had some nefarious other, like um, unseely fae oh. who wanted to steal all the pixies. That would be it, horrible. Imagine. <laughs> I, I, and and if there were a, a team of some sort, you know, it just writes itself. It writes, it writes, writes itself. itself. It writes itself. <laughs> I'm just saying, well, you know. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to write. I hope you enjoyed it, <laughs> Nate. Even if Clive was like, I don't get it. Oh, no, that was great. That was awesome. Yeah, nice.
Um, and yeah, this will be a fun way to get big tresims. Um, you mean big tresim? One big tresim. Giant one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh. yeah. You can either basically have lots of meat, like lots of large tressims, or you can have one real big tressim. Clifford the big red tressim. Yeah, yeah. Basically. Oh my gosh. Um, nice, cool. Well, thanks, guys. Should we do some shout outs? Yeah. All right, Anna, take us away. Sure. Uh, you can find everything about my work at annaprosser.com. You can also contact me there. I've been doing a talk show on Wednesdays called Cup Dates with Christina Wolfgram, and we just chit-chat. We feature your questions and comments, and it's a good time, so stop by my stream for that. Uh, my stream is Anna Prosser on Twitch, and that's also where I am on all social media. And my dog is at Happy Nisky, and I tag Mika, who also has a dog. I do. She is sitting on my bed right now, asleep. Um, and you can find her on Instagram at Rini's Wild Shape. She just also got a brother. His I name is that. Rue. He is three pounds and he's a little feisty boy. He tries to fight, but he and his big sister are getting along so well. Um, so I'll probably be posting some videos of them on Rini's Instagram. But as for me, who isn't a dog, you can find all my stuff at Mika Burton, which isn't as interesting. Um, I also have a horseback riding account at Mika Strides. Uh, Although horse COVID essentially is going around, so uh, competitions are canceled for the foreseeable future, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, other than that, everything I do is under NDA, but you can go to uh, Critical Role's YouTube channel to watch some Q&As that I did for the Legend of Vox Machina series, which is now all out on Amazon Prime. So go watch that and learn about the animation process. It was really fun and cool. I tag a soon-to-be birthday boy, Nate. Am. Uh... I, uh, twitch.tv slash Nate wants to BTL. I stream there. Uh, I don't think I have much else going on. Uh, I have a dog and Shady has a dog. Don't forget your birthday stream. You're streaming for your birthday, right? I, I have streamed for my birthday. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh wait. So not soon to be birthday boy. Uh Already birthday, Happy birthday, birthday boy. boy. Today, Happy birthday, boy. Happy birthday. It's totally today. Happy birthday. Wow. How are we doing with that? Are we <laughs> the illusions maintained? It's good. Fine. Shady, go. <laughs> I have a dog, like Nate said. That's the only important part of the thing that just happened. Um, you can find me at Shady Penguin uh, on Twitch, on Twitter, on YouTube. I just play a lot of video games and talk about things I don't have any wisdom to impart with you guys this week. So instead, I will tag Mark, who oh. I'm sure is full oh. of wisdom. Shady, you have, you're always full of wisdom. Whether or not you have a specific wisdom this week, you are a man of wisdom. Uh, you can check me out. <laughs> now that I've recovered, uh, you can check me out at Sherlock underscore Humes on Twitter, pretty much most places on the internet. You can also check out my other D&D show that I do, High Rollers D&D. Um, been going a long time. We've nearly finished our studio. It's so close to being done. Uh, um, that's going to be finished. Uh, that's pretty much it. You can find me on those places. Come, come and check that out. And, and that's it. Thanks very much. Thanks, everybody. Happy birthday, Nate. Thanks very much for joining me. See you next time on Night Seeding Star. Bye.